Hey YouTubers, it's been a while. I've been doing kitchen renovations and other projects, but I'm back with an epic project. I'm going to take this old double garage and turn it into this clubhouse. You can tell this was built in the 80s because it's using hardwood wall girts and roof battens. Angle iron holds up the ends of the steel trusses and these support the hardwood battens. Up the top is a corrugated iron roof and it's nailed down with good old roofing clouts. What you're seeing now is a 3D sketch of the plan. I use 3D software to help me visualise and plan how all the components will fit together. It'll have an area over here for the kids to play video games and watch movies. A pool table and dartboard will occupy the other end with plenty of space around the table. On the other side, there's a bar for the older kids and at the back is a separate room where my son can build his dream model railway. Half the challenge with a project like this is just knowing where to start. I've actually got a chair sitting over in the corner there that I use to comfortably sit and think about things. I've got a solid door from the kitchen renovation that I'm going to use to replace this door here, which goes from the clubhouse into the workshop. So I figured I'd just start with that and then work my way around the walls. The way I'm going to line these walls is to use some 90 structural against these steel supports. Bring them out level with the edge of that. And then I can sheet all the way around the walls. I decided just to crack into the frame and then I'll do a bit of a walk around and show you how I did certain things. Let's take a look. I'm going to do a handheld so it might be a bit wobbly. I replaced the old crappy windows with a couple of new windows. The old ones are just about falling out so I replaced them. At the top, I've actually cut the studs on an angle to follow the roof line and the iron I'm going to use for the sheet for the ceiling lining is going to sit on top of those stud, the top plate, the top there. There's just enough room that it'll fit along there and then it'll screw onto these extra battens going along the ceiling. This is the bar here. I've just used 90 and 70 mil structural pine to frame that out. It'll have uh, the bar on top will overhang by about 300. So when you sit a bar stool along it, you can tuck your feet under. And from this point here, you can also see the TV which will be on that wall over there above the chair. I've just painted the trusses monument, which is like a dark grey. The ceiling is going to be the same colour, so they shouldn't be too visible once the ceiling's in. I'll explain how I'm going to do the roofing. So there's three pieces of tin that make up the roof. First of all, this piece of flashing gets screwed into the hardwood battens up top. And that stops any dust and moisture and rubbish coming down through the ridge gap. Then the roofing sheets go either side of that, down the roof and meeting the walls. They'll meet in the middle of this crease here. And then this final piece of flashing just sandwiches it all together, just to dress it off and hide those edges. So it'll end up looking like this with the sheets. See up between the trusses here, I'm just running some uh, string lines. That just helps to hold the insulation bats up. Once I put the iron sheets up, I'll cut those strings and pull them out. So this is the nice and simple solution for getting the wall sheets up. Much easier with two people, so I've got my wife helping me. This is just a bit of wood with a couple of bits of wood clamped to each end to give it a nice bit of surface area. The idea is that we hook one end of the sheet over the top plate of the studs that's against the wall. Then I hold the sheet up while my wife pushes this in to jam the sheet up between the floor and the ceiling. And then it's nice and safe, I can go and screw it all off. This is where the TV is going to go, so I'll put a bit of extra structure in here for the TV wall mount. Got all the power ready to go. 
Over here I've got a 50 mil pipe for the HDMI cable and stuff to go in, feeds in from behind the TV, comes out in the cabinet where the amplifier is going to be stored. All right, here we are in the bar area. We've got another power point here. Um, there's another power point over on that end of the bar as well with a USB charging port in it. We're using Ethernet cable for the mood lights. Um, these are going to be RGB LED lights. Each um, circuit needs four strands and you get eight in one of these, so there's enough for two circuits. One of these snakes all the way back to the start of the room so you can turn everything on and off when you walk in. You can see behind me now, I've started sheeting off, done the drywall work, um, started at the back room and I'm just moving, working my way forward. Main thing is just to get it all sheeted off so I'm covering all the power points so we can get all the power in and the lights in. Then I won't be dependent on these floodlights anymore. I can come out at night and see what I'm doing to get this thing finished. And these are all the speaker wires going through as well. So I'll have another little pipe in here just so I can get to all those speakers from in there which is where the amplifier is going to sit. Um, got a few things set up here for later using this Ethernet cable for an additional circuit of lighting to go over the my son's train layout which are around the, around the outside of this room in here. So I'm still in the end room here which was added to this garage as an extension and they didn't add any plastic underneath the slab. So what that means is when it's really wet outside, you get moisture coming through and it, go, it comes into the room underneath things that are sitting on the floor. So what I've done is I've added a pond liner, which is one coat of primer and then two coats of this rubberized paint, which ensures you don't get any moisture coming through from the slab into the room. been a productive day today, knocked out the two roller doors, put in this second hand sliding door and a spare window. Um, next step is just to finish out the framing here and we can sheet this wall. There's another small section to sheet over this side and then paint time. The bar is essentially a steel frame over old recycled hardwood fence palings. There's a 3mm MDF base to hold the resin in and probably took about 1-2 to two litres in total. It's mostly black resin with a bit of sparkling green here and there to give it more personality. Overall I'm happy with the result. I wanted to go for a dark and cosy Irish bar vibe and the mood lights give it a subtle Aussie green and gold feel. A lot of guys who build man caves seem to go for the corrugated iron or rustic look. This looks great, but I wanted something a bit different, and there's a thousand ways to cut it. You just need a solid vision and follow it through. I also wanted to break up the rectangular shape of the room so it looks less like a converted garage. There's a few imperfections here and there, but sometimes you need to accept that or never finish. I wanted this done by Christmas so the kids could enjoy it during their school break. So far it's already had a lot of use, so I'm very happy. Next steps are adding more artwork to the walls, then installing the under sink water purifier for the sink. 
I've skimmed over a lot of detail to keep this as short as possible, but if you've got any questions, I'll do my best to answer. Cheers.